And so with that, I think uh, this is a, a case of one demo is worth many thousand words. So I'd like to welcome Steve Wilson, who's the vice president of our XVM program on stage. Steve, thanks very much. Thanks, Rich. All right. So Steve, um, what are you going to show us today here? I'm going to show you a live demo of the XVM Op Center software here, managing a set of servers in a data center out in Denver. So this is a live data center. Yep. This is one of our data centers at Sun in, in Denver. Yep. Be very gentle. Okay. So we're logging in here. We're going to have this data center in Denver, which is, has a collection of servers running in it, which are running the um, XVM software as well as a set of Solaris Spark servers running on uh, bare metal with databases on Okay, them. and this is uh, logging in uh, given that we have network connection here, yeah. as we did this morning. <laughs> try this one more time. Okay, good. This is always, um, whether it's Java 1 or Oracle Open World, we always do live demos and it's always uh, you know, operating with... Uh, there we I go. I guess I shouldn't say operating without a net, but uh, go ahead. Yep. Okay. So we're going to switch over here and we're going to take a look at the data center here. So what we have, um, if you look at the screen here in the center panel, we have a list of all the gear that we have in this data center. And over on the uh, left side of the screen, we have a set of groups that it's organized into here. And you can see the database servers running Spark as well as the um, XVM host servers, which are a set of x86 servers running the XVM server software, and a set of virtual machine guests running inside them. So this reflects what is today and increasingly going forward um, a typical data center. It's a, it's a mix. It's a heterogeneous environment of operating system, application workloads, some in a virtualized space, some not, some running on the physical metal, right? So this Absolutely. is a, a really good snapshot of, of the reality. Right. Okay. So what we can do here is we can walk through a couple examples. And again, what we've got here is this data center. We have the database tier running on a set of large Spark servers, but we're going to run the web tier inside a set of guest virtual machines because it's more flexible and it's easier to control the resources. So this demonstration reflects a lot of things your group did about um, the design center for this. What was really the target for the, the build out, the implementation of XVM Ops Center? Well, what we wanted to do was allow um, customers who had people with um, typical Windows administrator skills to get a lot more control over their data center. Not everyone is a hardcore Unix administrator, and we wanted to use um, user interface concepts that were familiar to people using applications like iTunes and Facebook to take more control over their data center. Yeah, it's really interesting to bring some of the familiarity that, that people who are running the data center are and project that into the space that is uh, what has historically been very complex uh, distributed systems management. So, so run us through a few examples here. Yeah. Okay, so what we're going to go ahead and do is you can see here we have all sorts of operations we can do from provisioning operating systems and firmware. Um, and then we have this updating channel here which can allow us to manage things like patching jobs for um, you know, hundreds or even thousands of servers as well as adding software two systems that are already up and running. And so what I'm going to go ahead and do here is run through a scenario where we're rolling out a new set of web applications and we're going to provision some web servers out onto some machines. Right. So it brings up a, uh, a wizard just of the typical type where you click next through um, just like any t kind of typical Windows application. And so I'm going to say provision web server. So what you're defining here is a uh essentially a repeatable action, one that can be stored away as a procedure to help manage a local data center where you're present or somewhere out on the network where you're uh, far away or even a collection of distributed data centers. Absolutely. All right. So we're going to walk through the task of creating this job. I have a bunch of profiles here. Profiles are basically a description of the different types of provisioning and updating jobs that you want to do. And so I have a profile here for Apache which defines all of the packages that I want to install as well as um, any patch levels or other things I want to define to make it my standard Apache load. So this is sort of the middle phase of uh, deploying a data center. You have operating systems, you have systems uh, um, hardware, you have um, a virtualization engine running on some of these machines and you're going to deploy a workload out onto one or a few, actually in this case I think one. one yep. 
But it's just as easy to go over here and select from a group. I could select literally a group of 100 servers and say provision this. In fact, the first customer that we're, we've rolled this out at is the Texas Advanced Computing Center, which is actually a supercomputing center down at the University of Texas. It's going to be the largest supercomputing center in the world. Yeah, they have, they're going to have 4,000 nodes when it's fully up, and this is designed to deal with that kind of scale. And we, we're running this there? Yes, we are running this here. We are running this at TAC today. I'm such a shameless shill here. <laughs> so here we've gone ahead and specified out the job. Um, one thing I can do here is I can choose whether to run it in parallel or sequential. So again, if I want to spread it out to numerous servers, I can run it in parallel. I can choose whether I want to simulate it or do the actual run. Again, you might want to simulate it and then do the actual run during a downtime window. But I'm going to go ahead and do the actual run. So the parallelization allows you to really shrink down the window. You know, when you're when you're uh, updating or upgrading or modifying your data center, you want to shrink down the time window as much as possible. And so mm -hmm. being able to build these pre-tested simulated uh, actions and then run them massively parallel across one or multiple data centers allow you to squeeze more out of the data center, shrink down the window uh, of downtime. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So one of the other things that's really cool is the ability to go in and see other parts of your data center. So for example, our large customers have data centers that are spread across the world. So we've been looking at a data center in Denver. Um, we have data centers in other parts of the world. We have a data center in London. We have a data center in Asia. And I might want to get access to those resources, even though the networks may be physically desperate, aren't connected to each other. We have a hierarchical system that allows us to get a hold of all of these resources. Right. And I can see that from here. Can you see that? Yep. So what I get here is you can see I have um, the data center in London, the data center in uh, Sao Paulo, and the data center in Singapore. And one of the things is if I want to go in tonight and help out the team in Singapore do this provisioning job to roll out the web applications, I need permissions to do that. Well, that, that's one of the big concerns, right? Because it looks like you're interacting with our data center, uh, access control, security issues, big concern doing this at a world scale. Yep. And so what I need is somebody who's a um, you know, top-level administrator at that site to grant me those permissions. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things, again, that we tried to do, though, is take those very complicated tasks and make them easily familiar to the administrators who are running this data center. So we've actually used um, a set of metaphors similar to Facebook, where you can actually invite other administrators in to get privileges into your system. So, so what appears see, to be the simple metaphors in social networking are really powering a whole bunch of access control technologies under this to make yep. it bulletproof? So as you can see, I have an invitation here from uh, Pat Ryan, who's one of the administrators, who's invited me into this. And I can just go ahead and say, accept this invitation. And I say, yes, please. And as you can see down here under the team summaries, now I am listed as a team member in that Singapore data center. And you can see there are 87 different um, assets there mm -hmm. that I now have some set of privileges to go ahead and modify. And you know of these assets because uh, OpCenter um, automatically inventoried those things, did a find on virtual and physical things? Yes. Great. All right. So, cool. um, so you're in the midst of a uh, process of, of deploying an application. Should we take a peek? Yeah. So we can just flip over here. All right. So we can flip over to our job manager, and it lists that the job succeeded. So, so how long does it typically take, whether you're doing one or hundreds in serial? I mean, here's an example of deploying an app server to a system or 100 or 500 systems. What's Pushing that? out a set of packages is usually a you know, one to two minute operation. Provisioning a whole operating system is, again, a matter of a handful of minutes. And we can do that in parallel. And we actually have a horizontally scaled architecture where you can put proxy servers in different places and push that out massively. Okay, so let me, let me just recap a, a little bit. So one, you know, one of the challenges in these worlds, it, it's nice to take a little slice of reality and show how you can excel, but it's a full life cycle that you have to deal with. So if you had a running um, a workload, running on a hypervisor, and you had to introduce a patch, to one system or, oh, 500 instances of that. How do you do that? Just does it? Yep. So you can just go ahead and you go into that same wizard that I walked you through, and you can actually select large groups, and you can create, um, say, a baseline report that says, I'd like to have this be the current patches as of a certain baseline, say, you know, the July 10th recommended patches from the vendor. Um, it'll go ahead and report out on which systems already have those patches, which ones don't, compute the minimal amount of patching that you need to do, um, batch up any reboots that needs to occur. It has a huge amount of automation in terms of how to do that and minimize those windows. In fact, we had one customer that was a uh, large consulting company. When they rolled this out, they really didn't do a lot of patching. It was kind of um, something that was kind of scary Too to scary. them. But as they got into things like Sarbanes-Oxley compliance requirements and do daylight savings patches, 
they needed to roll this out. And so they rolled this out on 600 servers and rolled out 10,000 patches in the first month. So this really brings together the whole life cycle of data center automation with the virtual world. So the physical world and the hypervisor-powered virtual world all brought together in a management system for, for all of it, right? Yep. Oh, nice work, Steve. Better get back to work. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Rich.